Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another lesson in pre-algebra. Today is today. This is unit five, lesson nine, linear function, non-linear function. Hmm. Okay, what is a linear function? Well, it is a function. What does that mean? Well, it's a relation where no x's repeat, right? A function that creates a straight line what are you doing there um, uh, I don't know what my computer does sometimes a function with a constant slope okay so it's also a function with a constant slope okay the slope does not change between points okay that is a linear function a function that creates a straight line and it is with a constant slope as well a nonlinear function is a function that does not create a straight line often graphed as a curve so let's write all that a function that does not create a straight line. Often graphed as a curve. Okay. So moving on, given graphs, determine whether each graph represents a linear or nonlinear function. So we want to know if it's linear or nonlinear. That's all we're doing here. So this comes down and it curves and turns and goes down again. So obviously it is not a straight line with a constant slope. It changes, graphing as a curve. So this is nonlinear. Okay, this one is a straight line. If I go, let's see, where are my points? Just to be specific, there's a point right here. Um, it's not quite a slope of one, but as you can see, it is a straight line. So this is linear. Okay, this is obviously not a straight line. It's a curve that is non-linear. And you will learn what these are in higher math classes. Um, this is a cubic. This is a quadratic or a parabola. And this is um, exponential decay. All right. But that's algebra two, algebra one. OK, so they're showing us nonlinear functions. We're not going to go into great detail as to what they are. But this is obviously a curve. So therefore, it is also nonlinear non-linear okay so there is from a graph determining whether it's linear or not that's it pretty simple okay given the equations so equations of linear functions are or can be written in slope intercept form you remember what that is y equals slope intercept y equals mx plus b both the x and y variables have an exponent of one. So in other words, if I have y equals 3x plus 7, for example, what they're saying here is it's y to the first power and x to the first power. x and y have a power, a degree or power of exponent of one. So degree is the same as power is the same as exponent. Okay, these are all synonyms. Degree, power, exponent, all mean the number that's raised up. Okay, y to the one, x to the one gives us a linear function. Okay, so determine whether the equation represents a linear or nonlinear function. So there, if there's nothing there, you assume it to be a one. So that is linear. Okay, um, and this one here, let me just use my pen rather than going back and forth. This is x squared. Y is to the first, but x is to the second power. 
So therefore, this is nonlinear. Okay, it's as easy as this. If you see a number other than one, or actually they don't put one. So if you see a number in a power for a Y or an X, it is nonlinear. So there's nothing here. So that's a one. There's nothing here. That's a one. So that is linear. And X times Y here. Well, that's a little bit different because... If I solve this for y, I'd have to divide both sides by x. So this would become y equals, and if I pull this out as 1 over x, if you will, times 10. Well, you haven't learned this yet, but an x in the denominator is saying as y equals x to the negative 1 times 10. Okay? In other words, y equals 10x to the negative 1. Okay, and so since x is not 1, it is nonlinear. That one is a little trickier. Okay, why is my computer doing that? Okay, so anyway, this is a 1 and this is a 1 here, but if we put it in linear, if we put it in y equals mx plus b form, it becomes negative. And negative 1 is not a 1, so that is why this is not. And I'll discuss that more in class if you don't understand. Okay, in this one here, all I'd have to do is rearrange all this stuff and put it in standard form. And if I move the y over here, it's a negative y equals in the negative x and minus 8 like so. Okay, subtracting y, subtracting x over. Well, these are still to the power of one, so these are linear. Okay, and here we have an exponent variable. So this is not a linear equation because I can't get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So since the x is up in the exponent, even if it is a one, this would be y equals three, okay, which is a horizontal line at three. But if x is 2, then that'd be 9. If x is 3, then it is 27, and so on and so on. That's going to graph as a curve. So that is non-linear. Okay? That's actually an exponential function, it's called. Okay? So here, there we go. There's some examples of linear and non-linear. Okay, let's continue on here. So in this case here, I'd have to multiply both sides by x. So to get those, I'd get y equals 2. What is this doing? y equals 2x. So therefore, this is linear. I'm getting frustrated with my computer. I think I need to throw it out the window and get a new one. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3x, subtract 3x. And this is going to give me negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 14. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. And I get y equals 3 over 2x minus 7. Okay, just showing you in standard form or taking standard form and putting it in slope intercept form that this is linear. Okay, in other words, x is to the first, y is to the first power. Same here, same here, this is linear. Okay, that's all you have to do, but you have to be careful of these special um, cases. But in this one, x over three can be rewritten as one third times x. And that is our slope times x, so that is linear. Okay, y-intercept of zero. Okay, we have a cube. That is non-linear. All righty. 5 over x equals 2 over y. Well, let's try to get these um, in y equals mx plus b form. So if I multiply, <laughs> if I multiply both sides by y, then these cancel, and I get y times 5 over x equals 2. And then if I multiply both sides by x, these cancel. And that's going to give me 5y equals 2x. And if I divide both sides by 5, I get y equals 2 over 5x plus 0, if you will. Okay. 
And that is linear. Slope of two fifths, y intercept of zero. Number 17 is y equals negative two, a linear function. Explain why or why not. So if I graph that, think about how we graphed before. So just really quickly, here's my x, y axis. Okay, I know it's not using a uh, ruler, making straight lines, but negative two is down here, right there. And my line would be a horizontal line, y equals negative two. That is linear. That is a slope of zero. And so, yes, it is. And the reason is it has a slope of zero and a y-intercept. It's a horizontal line, okay? Is x equals six a linear function? So remember, if we graph x equals six, that means it's crossing the x-axis at six. One, two, three, four, five. Here's six. So that's a vertical line. Did you hear what I said? Vertical. So it has the point six, zero, six, one, six, two, six, three. X's are repeating. That is not, that is linear. Oops, I'm sorry. It is linear, but it is not a function. It is a straight line, but it's not a linear function. It's a linear um, relation. How's that? Took me a second to think of that word. It's a linear relation. Okay, there are a set of ordered pairs, but it is not a function. Okay, let's move on. Given tables now, check to make sure the variables increase or decrease at the same rate. So in order for it to be linear, your variables have to increase at the same rate. So what did I have to add to one to get to two? Well, I had to add one. Okay, what did I have to do to get from two to three? I had to add one. What did I do to three to get to four? You have to add one. To get from one to four, I have to add, oh my, three. When I To get from four to seven, I have to add three. To get from seven to 10, I have to add three. Since all the x's increase at the same rate and all the y's increase at the same rate, it is a linear function, okay? Why is it a function? Because the x's do not repeat. Here's a nonlinear. To get from two to four, I had to add two, okay? To get from four to five, I only had to add one. Right there, I am done. It is not a linear function. As Soon as I find something that is different, and then this one is three. And to get from one to four, that's a plus three. To get from four to five, that's a plus, four to nine, that's a plus five. See, my computer frustrates me and, and it, throws me off and takes away my concentration. And then I start saying things I shouldn't be saying. Okay. All right. So from nine to 16, that's a change of seven. So two, one, three, three, five, seven, obviously different. So they're non linear, but it is a function because X's do not repeat. Okay. Okay. So here we go with X's from five to nine. Now it says determine whether the table represents a linear or nonlinear function. To get from five to nine, we had to add four. Nine to 13 is plus four. 13 to 17 is plus four. Three to two is minus one. Two to one is minus one. One to zero is minus one. These are all the same. These are all the same. Therefore, I'm writing an E, L, I, N, E, A, R, linear, okay? Uh, to get from negative one to zero, that's adding one. Zero to one is adding one. One to two, you had to add one. One to zero, minus one. Zero to one, plus one. One to four, plus three. Notice these are different, therefore non-linear. Okay. To get from negative four to zero, we had to add four. To get from zero to four, you have to add four. To get from four to eight, you had to add, not eight, you had to add four. To get from six to negative four, I had to subtract 10. Negative four to negative 14, oh my gosh, negative 10. Negative 14 to negative 24, subtract 10. All the same, linear. Negative five to negative four is a plus one. Negative four to negative three is a plus one. Negative three to negative two is plus one. Okay. 
7 to 9 is plus 2. 9 to 12 is plus 3. I'm done. 12 to 16 is plus 4. This is non-linear because these are different. Okay, so that's determining whether something's linear or non-linear given a table. Okay, that was a really quick and easy short lesson. Unit 5, homework 9 is just one page. That was easy. Thanks for watching and have a great day.